So I had an epiphany this morning. I need to come up with a content idea that's going to make you, the viewers, come back to this channel every single year, roughly around the same time, this time, for a segment that I'm going to title, Hey Cole, shut the hell up. And basically what this is, is I'm going to pick a team that I hope in the bottom of my heart, in the pit of my stomach, proves me wrong for how I view them going into the year. So when November rolls around, everyone can just look at me and go, Hey Cole, you had no idea what you were talking about. Shut the hell up. And so for the first team, I figured I got to go with the roster that I always put the wagon before the horse and I'm waving the white flag. I can't do it anymore. But please, Texas A&M. Prove me wrong in 2024. So what's going on, SEC Unfiltered? It's Cole Thompson here. Make sure that you like the video. Hit the ring notification down below. That way you don't miss a single episode of SECU. And of course, hit subscribe because we're talking college football every single day. Download the podcast version of the show wherever you get your podcast listening systems. Follow us on all of our social media channels at SEC Unfiltered, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Make sure that also, if you want to scream at me and already say, Cole, shut the hell up, it's at Mr. Cole Thompson on Twitter. And to keep up with the number one source, all things SEC, visit secunfiltered.com. This episode is brought to you by Roback. Use promo code SECU for 20% off all joggers, polos, hoodies, shorts, much, much more. Look good, feel good this upcoming fall on game days at roback.com with the promo code SECU. So I feel very inclined to talk about Texas A&M because of, I have covered the program up close and in person for the last four years. I was there for the highs. I was there for the lows. I was there for the year that you beat Alabama in your own backyard for the first time. I was there to see the kick on the sidelines of Kyle Field. I was there for the press conference when Jimbo Fisher was fired after the biggest win of the year against Mississippi State. I have seen this program. And what I've also seen is myself, and many others give way too much credit to Texas A&M going into the year. Now, I'm going to make this abundantly clear. A&M fans, stay with me for a second, please. You are a program that is good enough to compete alongside the Alabamas, the LSUs, the A&Ms, the Georgias of the world because of your facilities and because of your boosters. You have everything there to be successful. You have a state-of-the-art complex that any single player would be lucky to practice in. You have a state-of-the-art nutrition facility that has just been redone year after year. Your weight room is phenomenal. Your entire ambiance on game days is second to none. The ability to run out of that tunnel to the sounds of Jay-Z, I mean Kanye West, uh, play, uh, playing, hey, oh, hey, no one man should have all that power. Well, you're right. Nobody should, but still you do at Texas A&M. That's what you have at your disposal. Everything is there to be successful, except you haven't had the head coach. Jimbo Fisher arrived on a plane from Tallahassee, Florida, and was granted a plaque that said national champion 2000 and insert year here. That wasn't the case the second time around because they realized we can't put the wagon before the horse. And so for me personally, I'm not going to do the same either. I like the direction of Texas A&M going into this year with a brand new guy at the helm. I like the pieces that they return. I like some of the names they brought in from the transfer portal for the long haul. Des Ricks at cornerback, five-star phenom who was just at the University of Alabama. Yeah, he's going to be potentially an all-SEC player by the end of this season and for sure as hell by the end of next one. They added in some really good players who were proven. Nick Scorton comes on in from Purdue. This was the SEC, I mean, the Big Ten leader in sacks. And for my money, he's a favorite to be an all-SEC defender by the season's end in a first-round pick. I like the direction that they're going in. And I love the coach. I'll tell you what, man. You get a guy like Mike Elko, meat, potatoes, no-nonsense type of mentality from the East Coast, but having that Southern feel to his name, yeah, you're really well put together. You got the right man at the helm. And that's not an insult to Mark Stoops. Actually, I'm going to be completely transparent with you, Aggie fans. I don't understand why you hated the hire to begin with. I understand why you like this hire more because there's a little bit of a safe haven. It's like going home to see grandma and grandpa and having grandma's homemade cookies. You know that they're not poisonous. You understand that they're a delicious treat that brings joy to your life around the holiday season. I get that. Mark Stoops wasn't a bad hire. I will say my uncle was a better one, but that's not the case now that you're nor there. You got the right guy, at least for my money. But you got to prove it to me this year 
that you can put it all together. Their win total right now is at eight and a half, according to FanDuel. In my opinion, that's way too high. But here's the thing. You have to understand that there are no rebuilding years in College Station, Texas. The fan bases, the boosters, those who are writing the checks believe that this could be a program, not a potential, but a program, a promise that has already been prevailing and showing its stuff. So there is no reason to believe that you can't get to that eight win marker. There is no reason to believe that you can't be in the middle of November, finding your way, going into Auburn, Alabama, with a shot of getting a win to set up what could have college football playoff implications going into the next week against Texas in the first Lone Star showdown in over a decade. There's no reason not to believe that. You got the quarterback. Connor Wegman is a superstar. He played eight games in his college career. 18-2 to two touchdown to interception ratio. 16 passing, 2 rushing. He also upped his completion percentage. He also lowered his expect. I mean, he also upped his QBR rating, his passer rating. Yeah, his turnover went up a little bit, but you got to remember, 8 games is a sample size. If I'm getting 18-2 to two touchdown to interception ratio, when I get a 12-game sample size, that's pushing closer to 30-3. to three. I will take that 10 out of 10. And then you hear national people and pundits everywhere say that this guy's an injured-prone quarterback because of what? He got hurt one time since high school, and now we're saying, can he stay healthy? You don't know that. Nobody knows that. I don't know that. But I can tell you what, the term injured-prone is being thrown around like a cardboard box that has nothing in it, and you're just waiting for the, for the mailman to pick it up. That's all you got right now. The garbage man isn't here, and so you're trying to come up with narratives that would end this streak. My entire point is that I've put AM before the wagon every single time over the last few years. I know what this team is supposed to be and what this team actually has been. I've seen it up close. I know that they have a roster. They have five stars walk into that building and they end up having detrimental years. They never live up to expectations. And then the NFL draft comes around and you're like, hey, remember when he was a five star? Why is he going around six? Why is he going around seven? You have some pieces in play that are actually really good, but you haven't had the personnel to elevate their status. That's where I'm at right now. I believe Mike Elko for the long haul, this is going to be his worst team that he probably fields. And even then, that's still maybe eight wins, nine wins at best. That's not a bad team. That's a pretty damn good one, in my opinion. In fact, I would say to most people's opinion, that's what you want year one of setting a foundation underneath the coach that is not about the glitz and the glamour or the number one recruiting classes. He's about setting a standard in Kyle Field that is going to be remembered for years on end. Kind of like you have with the last guy that brought you to a Southwest Conference title championship and the same one with the Big 12 title. So you got that guy at the helm who had the Maroon Goons and the Wrecking Crew for an offense and defense. You feel pretty good. That's what I think for Mike Elko. But I got to see it first. I do. I look at their schedule. They have games that I feel very confident in. They have games that I have no idea what to expect. Florida is one of them. Hate to break it to you. 11 a.m. kick. I guess it would be a noon kick for them out in Gainesville. Against a team that has nothing to lose potentially at this point. Because they're one and one and they realize this is going to set a standard in the SEC. I don't know how to feel about that one. I don't know how to feel about Missouri. Missouri may have lost a ton of pieces, but they didn't lose some of the most important ones. Brady Cook, Luther Burden, Theo Wees. They still have a pretty good defensive front seven. I don't know about that game. I don't know what to make about LSU. LSU is a team that in, on paper probably took a step back this offseason, but they also took a step back when they lost a ton of names via the portal when Brian Kelly arrived and they still went to Atlanta. And they have a quarterback that maybe isn't Jaden Daniels 2.0, but he's got an arm, arm like Uncle Rico. And he's got wide receivers that can boot, scoot, and boogie like Brooks and Dunn. So I don't know how to feel about that game. I don't know how to feel about Auburn. Auburn, at this point, we're going to know a lot by the time that they go and play on the Plains. We're going to know a lot about what this future resides like underneath Hugh Freeze. That can include five-star phenom wide receiver Cam Coleman actually living up to the hype. That could include Perry Thompson. That can include having Peyton Thorne kind of just turn on a switch and go, hey, this is East Lansing. Oh, no, it's just a different feel. But no, I'm going to go ahead and throw for over 3,000 yards and lead my team to Atlanta. Like I did almost when I took them to uh, Indianapolis a few years ago. Oh, Peach Bowl victory. We're good. Could see that happen. That's the case. So please, Texas a and this year alone, please make me by November with a quarterback that I think is special, with a wide receiver room that is a little unproven, but still very potent, 
very bolsterous, very talented. A tight end that I actually have extreme high hopes for. Donovan Green does not get talked about enough because he's coming off of injury. Guys, you have to remember he was a stud before Jake Johnson was a stud. With the defense that's going to feature, in my opinion, potentially a favorite to be the defensive SEC player of the year with some really good guys in the trenches like Shamar Turner, like Shamar Stewart, uh, even guys like Gabriel Brownlow Dindy who hasn't seen the field. With a linebacker, headline Victorian York, that was undersized, but absolutely lived up to the hype of what he needed to be coming out of Temple, Texas. With a secondary featuring Bryce Anderson finally back in his natural safety position. With some new pieces and with the coach that I truly think always was the nucleus. Or I guess if you are a Wolverine and Deadpool fan, uh, Dead, Deadpool fan the cannon holder of your universe, now back in the center. You could be a team that ends up actually going 10 and 2 and proving me wrong. And you know what? Just because of this segment, I really hope by the time November comes around, you all just tell me, Cole, you were wrong about the Aggies once again, but this time because if you actually did lower your expectations, shut the hell up. But let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of Texas A&M going into 2024? Am I right on the money about how I view them? Am I wrong about how I view them? Make sure that you're following us on all the social channels, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at SEC Unfiltered. Make sure that also you download the podcast version of the show, wherever you get your podcast listening systems. And to keep up with the number one source for all things SEC, visit secunfiltered.com. I'm Cole Thompson. Until next time, folks. Later.